All right, guys, so up to this point, the memory that our program was allowed to use was pretty much limited by whatever variables we declared. And what do I mean by that? That was kind of a weird sentence. So in the last tutorial, we made a simple array called movie, and we put 20. And what this means is that whoever runs this program, they can type in um, the name or the title of a movie, and it can have up to 20 characters. So pretty much whatever variables we make reserves memory on our computer and that is what our computer program has access to. However, this creates a huge problem whenever you're talking about computer programs and that's this. What if you're running a program and you need more memory than your variables reserve? Well, this uh, occurs because say you made a program, I don't know, let me think of something, like for business owners to keep track of their employees. Well, you don't know how many employees that owner is going to have. Is he going to have five? Is he going to have 8,000? Well, we actually need to know this before we start making these variables because it would be really handy. So that is why I need to teach you guys about something called the heap. Now, I'm, I want to explain one more concept and exactly what the heap is. So all of the programs that are running on your computer right now Actually, if I do Control Alt Delete, then uh, and show you guys the programs, it's probably going to mess with my screen recorder. But basically, all of the programs that are run running and all of the memory that is being used up right now only accounts for a certain percentage of my computer's memory, and you can actually see it right here. See, I'm only using 22% of my computer's memory right now. Everything else is leftover memory that my computer is not using. This is called the heap and with this extra memory what you can do is you can access it with your program do whatever you want to do with it and then give it back to your computer when you're done with it pretty freaking cool so it's it's pretty much like extra memory that you can borrow I probably should have just said that <laughs> would have saved me like a minute of talking but now you guys really know what it is so in order to use this extra memory, let me go ahead and I'll show you guys the two simple functions that you need to use. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys an actual useful program. But for now, let's understand the concepts. So we'll say we'll make, um, actually, I probably should just code all of this uh, real quick. But pretty much right here, it creates an integer pointer and it's going to point to the first item in the heap. So after this what you can do is something like this so this points and we'll say that this is just um, to store like I don't know like the points of uh, players on my team or something that's what was going through my head and let me type the syntax out first because if I try to explain it it's not gonna make any sense so int you guys probably already know what that means in this new one malloc what the heck is that five times size of int And I might as well uh, type the rest of this. All right. So what I just said, let me give myself some space to work with. So what I just said a few minutes ago is that the heap is a leftover memory that we can borrow whenever we need it and give it back whenever our program ends. So first, how do we borrow the memory from the heap? Well, what we need to use is this function called malloc. It pretty much means allocate memory or get memory from the heap. So the only parameter this function takes is how much memory do you need? Well, what we are doing, first of all, is we're going to store a bunch of integers in this memory. So that's why, of course, I use the int pointer. Makes sense. Now, I don't know how many bytes an integer is. And I don't know if it's stored differently on different computers. Maybe an integer is four bytes on this computer. Maybe it's eight bytes on a Mac. Maybe an integer is 8,000 bytes. I don't freaking know. I don't freaking care. And it's not important because we don't need to type explicitly how many bytes an integer is. We just say the size of integer. And if this, if an integer is four bytes, it's going to return four. If a float is eight bytes, it's going to return eight. So this um, little bit of code right here saves you from finding out how many bytes each system stores in its variables or each type of variable. Now this right here just says, okay, multiply however many bytes the integer is by a certain number. 
in this case five. So pretty much this allows us to store enough memory or allocate enough memory for five integers. So it looks really confusing, but this entire line, now that we broke it down, it says, okay, go in the extra memory and reserve space for five integers. Simple enough. Now, the only other piece to this little thing right here is this int star. So what this is basically, as we know before, is it's an int typecast pointer. So a typecast pretty much means treat this as an int pointer. And this pretty much means that you need to use it whenever you're storing ints from the heap. Um, so again, you know what typecast does, you know what a pointer is, and should be pretty easy to figure out. Pretty much this is an int typecast pointer. Whenever we're storing ints, use an int typecast pointer. Whenever you're storing floats, floats use a float typecast pointer. Tomato, tomato. So the first thing to save memory is malloc. The only other function that is new to us is this free. So remember I said, all of this leftover memory in your computer, we're only, we, we pretty much only need to borrow it for the duration of our program. Once we're done with our program and we close out of it, oops, wrong program there. Once we're done with our program, we can give it back to the computer. So whenever we want to give it back, you just use free and then type, of course you see right here, the name of whatever you're allocating, in this instance, points. So sometimes we're gonna run programs and we're gonna need extra memory. This is how you get that extra memory and this is how you give it back. So now that we understand the very basic, and guys, there's a lot of crap to talk about concerning the heap and this is actually the very, very basics of the heap. But now that we understand that, I'm gonna show you guys in the next tutorial how to actually build a useful program instead of just you know talking about the boring concepts. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you later.